Today we're visiting with Roxanne here at Skin RX in sunny South Lake, Texas. She's gonna take us behind the scenes and tell us how she started her skincare clinic and went from a single room suite to two locations here in the DFW area. And at the end of the video, she's gonna share with you her best tip for any budding entrepreneur wanting to start their own business. So make sure you watch to the end. Before we get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We post videos each week to educate and inspire entrepreneurs just like you. With that out of the way, let's head in and go find Roxanne. Hey Roxanne, <laughs> good to meet you. And thanks for doing this, this is super cool. Uh, I know nothing about skincare clinic so I'm excited to learn and I think people who watch this are going to be inspired they're going to be educated and I think that um, the, the stuff you give back in that sense is going to be super valuable so okay, thanks fine. for doing it you're welcome uh, let's let's dive right into it um, because I know nothing about a skincare clinic tell me about skin rx and what's unique about it and what's special about it and, and what do you even do? What services do you provide? Okay, so the entire experience of a SkinRx Clinical Spa is to give a customized treatment and really listen to what the client's needs are. So whether it's skin rejuvenation or something with aging, volume loss, we have something for everyone. And so just really listening to each client and what they are looking for, so goals, and same as business setting, this is in a different skincare client setting. So that's kind of what we're about. We have different services ranging from hydrofacial to Botox and filler um, that a medical provider helps with that. So that might answer your question a little bit. Yeah, still probably <laughs> still probably need to go in deeper um, yes. when we get into it. But no, that's a good that's a good start. Tell me what I know you started in 2015. Is that right? Yes. So how did you even get into starting your own business and starting your own skincare clinic? Um, funny story. I said I would never own my own business because I saw my mom, an entrepreneur growing up, and I said, never. And what happens? I don't know. The rest is history. So um, to let's see, I was 14. I had a facial treatment. I had really uh, low self-esteem and skin issues, and it was a horrible experience. And I said, I'm never doing that again. As I got older, I needed... Mm. More, I had more issues come up in my 20s. At that time, I was traveling the country. I was um, going to college, and I kept trying to find the right place and the right people to help. So I kind of dove into all these different aesthetic businesses mm -hmm. and different services all over, and I just couldn't find anything that felt like home. So I went to school, aesthetic license I started with, and it's state to state. There are some states that require minimum hours and there's some that um, require a lot more hours, years. Um, Europe is much more strict. Uh, they're a true college of aesthetics. This is like a trade license. Got it. Okay, so. And so you're already studying, you already stu you decided to study this line of work before you even knew you were going to start your own business. It was more of a hobby. Okay. So if you're gonna go play baseball, yeah. are you gonna go play baseball? No, it was it was more like a hobby and I had a passion for it. So I knew when it came down to, okay, the babies are growing up. I was a stay-at-home mom at the time. What am I gonna do with my life? Mm. And at that time, I knew I wanted to be in aesthetics. And so I visited schools on a Monday and signed up the following week and um, worked for another med spa while I was still in school. So I just kind of learned exactly what, what there was to offer. And then going from there, I decided, okay, I'm working 70 hours a week and I'm not in the best culture. I'm not able to do the services I want to do. Um, so I knew I wanted to open my own place and I worked there for three years and then started Skinner X in 2015. Great. Give us okay. a tour. So behind this, the scenes. this is like our back closet for the providers when they're doing services, kind of an overflow. So this kind of helps us with inventory. Um, so we typically have different devices here, products, and also the other side has more products. 
and typically every room stops. This is just our backflow. So um, this is a little, this is nicely stocked right now. So these are different for chemical peels and we just kind of have it organized. When you, when you decide to start your business, I guess for anybody who's thinking about starting it, a lot of people don't know what it takes to start something. So when we think about capital or how much you invested in to start up and going, how much did it take you? How much did you put into it at the beginning? Well, I would say if I could do it over or give advice, definitely set aside a savings before you dive into it because I didn't do it the smart way and I paid for it for years. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of use my own personal um, credit line at the time. I didn't have a long history of credit. Um, so it was hard for me to go out and get a business loan. So I took some big risks and didn't pay myself for years. Didn't do it the smart, I mean, there's smarter ways, right? I've heard your story. So um, I wish, I always give people advice, set goals, um, talk to mentors, find some local um, libraries, have great mentorship programs that are free and kind of have a goal setting going in, you know, target what audience you want and what services you want to offer and then go from there. Got it. Um, so. If somebody was to start a skincare clinic, just real small how you started, what do you think in terms of a number they should kind of be thinking of in terms of how much it would cost, whether it's their own money or whether they're getting an SBA loan right. or whether they're getting friends and family to help, like how much would it cost for somebody to start? Well, if you want to pay yourself, then I would suggest doing something around the lines of 60 to 75,000 to start off with. Yeah. That, that's that's good to know. Is that a good amount to yeah. start? Okay. Well, it, and that's a loose, yeah. I mean, that's just like a, <laughs> let's have, and it depends on your expectations of what you have. Most people going in it have these certain expectations of, right. I want my branding to look this way and that yeah. takes money. Yeah. What about licenses and permits? What, what does that look like when you set up a clinic? So it depends on what scope in the state you're in too. So with Texas, um, it requires different licensing, health department and TDLR, which is a state um, entity that kind of looks over all these clinics. Um, so there's that, um, either medical director on staff. So we have a medical director and a nurse practitioner. And so now with that being said, I didn't have that in 2015. That was something added on later. Got it. And that takes a lot more capital. Yeah. <laughs>Back to uh, growing a company, the hardest part for me was hiring people. Uh, that was the trickiest part. When did you hire your first person or when did you hire your first employee and how did you know it was time to hire? So my setup was interesting. Uh, I, I researched the right location to be in in the beginning in 2015 and the right location was inside a doctor's office. So I kind of negotiated with them and signed a um, short-term contract. So with that being said, I paid part of her staff to do the check-in, check-out. Oh. So I did have a support system. Uh, however, I didn't have to manage the employees. But it was interesting setup with that. It didn't last long. Um, because of the location, other issues, I decided to move off and branch off in a salon suite, which a lot of states have now. Mm -hmm. And so then I got overwhelmed. 70 hours turned into 80 hours turned Jeez. into not sleeping. <laughs> You're working nonstop. Yeah. So that's when I said, okay, it's time to hire somebody. So yeah. I hired an assistant, which meant more space, more rent, right? Yeah. And then my goal setting went up as far as revenue and I shifted somewhat, which meant work smarter, not harder. And so um, I had to target, um, I, I found a great client audience, loyal, that was, they were worth they valued my work and I could set a certain price. Employees and growing employees, um, especially in today's market, I know it's super hard to hire people. At least that's what I'm hearing from a lot of places. Have you felt the same or have you been able to attract the, the talent that you need? I think we've been able to attract the talent we need, not being in a rush. I think if you're in a rush, that's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. Just really 
once you build up a good reputation, I feel like resumes start coming in and always keeping good relationships open because you'll never know. So even if I, I constantly interview, even when I'm not necessarily hiring, just to have that good connection. That's super smart. What do you budget, at least in, in your situations now, and you have two locations, right? You have one here and one in Dallas, yes. is that right? Uh, with both locations kind of big picture, what do you budget in terms of salary? Like how big is your salary right now with two locations and a little over 15 people, somewhere around 15 people? So Dallas, we separate, we, we have an interesting, sort of like a franchise. I have a managing partner there. So I, it's nice because I can be as hands-on or hands-off as she would like me to be. And so she manages that. Okay. I do help, we do help each other out on the back of the house type of um, hiring, website, SEO, mm. um, our e-commerce, our shipping is done at this location. And so it's a little different as far as um, that scenario just the traditional, altogether. Yeah, it sounds yes. like the, the hiring scenario is different than just a regular. Is it? Is it just? Is are most of the employees salaried, or is there a component of uh, commissions as well? So a big com- component of commissions. So in this industry, service-based industries are typically heavily commissioned. Got it. So it's a structure of hourly plus commission. Um, And so that's typically what it is. Our management is on salary. Um, So there's still a commission structure with that. Now, if you let me do a hydrofacial (laughs) on you, um, it's not that intimidating. So this is one of our nice little facial devices that a lot of people have in their med spas, hydrofacial. Um, They've done a great job marketing. So using a company like this, they already have the marketing out there. People just look online and Google helps us with finding new clients that are looking for hydrofacial So how does that even work? I mean, hydro obviously it sounds like well there's water involved. Right. And it's and it's what you're you're spraying something on the face or how does it even just get the sprinkler system out? No. So really <laughs> this device is really cool. So it does a four different steps or virtually three to four different steps or more. And so we use this for facial rejuvenation or scalp treatment actually, for scalp and hair growth, especially men and women post COVID are losing a lot of hair. And so we've done scalp treatments with this. So it's um, using a different um, suction method. So it's actually cleaning out debris out of the skin and the, I mean the pore, cleaning the pores out and then it's infusing serums. And so it makes it, really nice and consistent and so it lights up it's all pretty when it's all lit in the room and so it has different solution and it uses a certain amount and then it gives everybody this glowing red carpet look and something like this ranges around two to 250 or more per treatment treatment. the next thing I'm curious about is we obviously see a lot of product up here how did you even set up your relationships with vendors? How did you even find them? I'm just thinking of somebody who wants to start a clinic and they're like, I love this line of work, I'm passionate too, but where do I go to find vendors and what vendors do I work with? How does that all work? So uh, being in the industry, I dove into taking a lot of classes at conferences. So networking, conferences, talking to other owners, what's successful in their clinics and just building relationships with those companies. And so a lot of them are really well known as far as the education component of it. Mm -hmm. And so a few of these lines, um, we do a lot of continuing education with them. And as you know, with anybody that client base that you're supporting their company, they support you back. So there's just certain ones that stand out. That makes sense. What what are those conferences called? Like what, what would someone search up to find a conference like that. So there's a few med spa conferences and aesthetic conferences all around the world. Um, I'm going to one of the largest ones, ice spas in Las Vegas coming up. People from all over the world come to that one. Mm. And then there's some other ones in Europe that are big. I haven't gone to those yet. Yeah. Someday. That soon. sounds fun. Go yeah. to Europe and do yeah. work. <laughs> that, that's my goal. <laughs> so going to those conferences are really helpful. You meet vendors. You, you talk to other people, you network, and that's kind of how you build up the product side of it. Is that right? 
Yes, I think just in now social media world, how much do we learn from other people in our industry based on social media? All of a sudden you see these before and after photos and go, what is this? What are they using? Yeah. And so it's different from multi-level marketing. This is um, reputable before after photos of companies and businesses that have just been booming and getting results. Yeah. So a lot of social media networking Okay. Now is an amazing way to find a lot of these vendors. Yeah, that makes sense. And then when when you're purchasing inventory, you just is it the same as kind of other industries where you set up an account and they're giving you terms? Yes. Um, where you have 60 or 90 days to pay back? How does that work? Right. That's the goal. Uh, you know, net, working on net is much better because it's just more, you know, you have that idea of going in, okay, I can definitely set goals, no every monthly the PL is a little more predictable. I guess predictability is the best. Um, but a lot of companies don't even do net yet. Mm. So some of the larger ones are set up for that. Um, so going in it, um, we purchase based on however many employees we have, how many bookings we have, what's the time of the year. Certain products sell better springtime versus mm -hmm. wintertime. So if somebody were to start their clinic, how much money would they need to kind of get the products or enough products to at least just start? So if you were gonna do a startup by yourself with no other employees and you are just a one-time mm -hmm. show, um, typically you need about 5,000, a minimum amount would be 5,000, which would cover in treatment room and a few products to sell. But obviously the more retail you have, the more you can customize to all these types of clients. Right, that makes sense. And makes you a better location or a better place because right. You, it's not a one-size-fits-all. We're in the middle of expanding right now, and so this is one of the treatment rooms here. We call it the white cloud bedding. So usually when somebody comes in, we'll do a consult with them, we'll sit down, and then they get to get all comfortable under the bedding. And so we're a clinical spa, so we try to bring this spa feeling with good result-driven treatments in the clinic. So different hybrid. I mean, usually you're very clinical med spa or you're very spa. So we just try to bring in a little mixture fusion of it. For me, one of the hardest things when I started a company was understanding how like accounting works because I have no background in that stuff. So finances, accounting, how do you do your books? Who helps you with that? And how did you figure all that out? Well, once upon a time, I was really bad at that. And most, I would say, successful Entrepreneurs are really bad at that. We're creative, we're great with marketing, we have a great drive, yeah. but when it comes to organization with accounting, that's when you hire somebody great. Yeah. And so um, I took on a business partner in 2017. And so having that business partner, he kind of looked up my books and said, okay, what's going on here? Let's get some organization. And so we hired somebody great to do the um, financials with that. And so is that outsourced to somebody, like a company that helps you do that? Or is it actually an employee that comes in hourly or full-time or how, how does that work? So it's a small company. Mm. And so I, I have a contact person. I just work with one person and they have been able to get to know our business. I know a lot of accountants that are connected with a lot of my friends that own businesses and they just hire an accountant just to kind of get that done, but I have somebody for payroll. I used to sit and do payroll myself. I would do that at 11 o'clock at night and yeah. start, you know, make it, praying I was calculating everything right, <laughs> paying the taxes correctly. So obviously working smarter and I found somebody great to do that. To do that, so that's all so kind of outsourced. It is outsourced. Yeah, and what does that, what does that cost you? Um, I pay approximately 12 to $1,300 a month. Got it. And that's probably going to be going up soon. The yeah. more employees, the bigger you get, the obviously more you pay. Yeah, but really affordable from a standpoint of like actually getting it done correctly. Right. Um, it's not. I think it's a lot less than people think uh, to get it done right. Correct. Um, so there's solutions for that. I think you figured it out. That's good. It took it took a few years <laughs> to figure it out, but eventually. <laughs> yeah. Um, a lot of people are interested when they start a business to understand profits. Everybody really wants to know how much money they're going to make. When you think about a skincare clinic, maybe talk me through what you look for in profits or how you kind of figure out profitability because you are a service, there's right. also products involved. How does that work? 
So this is a little, this, yeah, we'll dive a little deeper in this because um, there's a lot of variables with it. So obviously service-based industry, you need to make sure you're booked. So a lot of places are recipe for disaster and failure because they have everything great. They hire staff and then what happens? They don't have the clients coming in or they don't have the repeat business. So I would say profit margins could be all over the place when it comes to the service-based industry. Uh, retail products are pretty, um, you know, goal setting is huge with each in provider to help with that profit margin. There's like a 50%, I would say about the time you pay taxes and everything, it's about a 30% profit margin with the retail products. Mm -hmm. And then when it, so when it comes to the services, how do you even price the services? Like how, if somebody wants to start a clinic, how would they even know? how to price something. Market research. <laughs> so and how would you do that? Yeah, so um, local competitors, depends on your market you're in. You could easily go on somebody's website, look at their pricing. Okay, these are the services I wanna offer. What are the people down the road charging for this? And are they even busy? And what's their reputation like? So I think just doing, you can either hire a company to do that, which of course means more money going in it, or you can pick up the phone yourself or look on the websites and kind of do your own market research. So you talked a lot about getting bookings. How, how does a clinic find their clients? What marketing do you do and what works for you? So for years, I did not do any marketing. I simply word of mouth, wow. asking every client that came in the door, just showing that I'm grateful for them. And the best compliment ever would be Google review <laughs> or telling a friend or a neighbor or buying a gift card for somebody. And so really word of mouth. So service-based industry that I think that's just one of the things companies open and these med spas open and they spend thousands on marketing and they're just another advertisement in a local magazine that people just flip through. So what makes you stand out? Mm -hmm. um, so are you not spending anything in terms of print advertising or paid ads online or what any, any spend in any of those areas or is it mostly what you said just focusing on customer service and making sure people return? So this recently, this year, we started doing uh, more Google, um, kind of the SEO advertising, but we pay minimum. We're not paying a lot. Um, social media, the power of social media is huge, especially when you're a service-based industry with before and after photos, TikTok, Instagram. When I started off, it was just Facebook. So, so are you guys doing actively doing Instagram and TikTok and some of those things? Yes. And so every provider that we have here, we encourage and support them and in being involved as well. So is it your own account or you're posting on, or how have you set that up? I'm curious to know. So with our branding, what we did, I was huge with social media starting off back when social media wasn't really a big thing. People were like, wow, you're really good at this. And I thought, I don't know what I'm doing. So, you know, obviously pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, but um, we have a, website that obviously has links to our social media for our business, but then also with our bio of everybody on About Us, we link their own social media. So we really encourage them building their own branding and them taking pride in that. That's really smart. That's a real interesting take on it and having them, because it's less about the company, it's more about them right. as an individual. Right, and building their brand. And um, and that comes goes back to like just the culture and hiring the right people and attracting the right people. And do you find that that drives people into the, to the clinic then? Yes, huh? yes. I mean, it, social media is so powerful now. Somebody will message um, one of the employees and go, how do you like working there? And so it's just, it's that word of mouth or social media power yeah. that makes it really easy and accessible for people. Yeah, I did see that you guys had a lot of good Google reviews. I mean, it's 4.9, tons of reviews. Everybody says, how do you, is is that a very passive thing or is it actively you're encouraging customers to leave reviews on Google? So I've always actively, re I mean, I'm not shy about it. Today I had a brand new 
client was so nervous coming in at the end they were like that was amazing and so much better experience than I imagined and I asked them why and they told me and I said okay now can you document that on Google for me and I'll make sure and give you some extra samples today so just not being afraid if you're prideful of what you do um, don't be afraid to ask for that simple task if I go to a business and they ask me hey would you mind doing a Google review if you're really happy sure I'll go in the parking lot and do it and so this is the uh, which room is this so we use this as an injection room so usually somebody that comes in and complains about um, wrinkles or loss of volume there's only so much we can do on a holistic facial approach and they'll have a consult with a nurse practitioner and she can do anything from Botox to help with wrinkles there's certain filler that helps volumize and back 20 years ago everybody looked funny and scared to look different now the approach is you want that natural look you don't want to look at somebody and go wow what have they done? Yeah. It's different now. So interesting. Yeah. Very cool. You're like, I don't know about this. This is intimidating. Yeah. Like, Isaac, sit down. We just, <laughs> we'll be real quick. <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> Actually, why don't you sit here? That would You're be fun. Star. No. Do it. Yeah. Come yeah. Okay. Don't film me when I'm getting my injections out. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Just uh, cut right now, please. <laughs> Well, look at those smile lines he's getting. I'm just That's kidding. Like, I get a lot of lines here. Are you wearing um, your sunscreen? No, I don't wear any sunscreen. Oh, we'll talk about that on a whole another episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk about it. Like, what what does a normal day look like for you as somebody who started a skincare clinic? Like, what, what are the tasks involved in your... Oh, wow. Okay. Um, personally, I strive to wake up really early. And How early? Go and get a workout in. 4.30, 5 o'clock. Wow. So that means I have to go to bed somewhat earlier, but I'm really bad at that. People say that all the time. How do you do that if you go to bed late? So I'm a 20 minute napper once in a while in the car, (laughs) waiting on a kid from a practice. So early mornings, late at nights, um, in the morning I've learned to really get organized every morning and kind of manifest my day before I walk out the door. How do you do that? What's- Look at the calendar, look at the phone, look at the schedule making sure I'm blocking out the right amount of time. Um, I think that's a lot of it, time management. Mm -hmm. And then coming in for a day of of work, what tasks are involved? Is it, is there any training? Is there, are you actually working with clients or are you more managing? What what do you do on a day-to-day basis? So I have scheduled certain days for certain things. So Monday, Tuesdays, office days, Wednesdays, Thursdays, I still see clients and do trainings. And Friday is my, oh, I have to catch up for the week and I'm in over my head. So Fridays are just kind of my day to review everything for the week Mm -hmm. and get reorganized and kind of task oriented days. Um, And then weekends are overflow of creative marketing ideas. Very cool. Um, Starting a business is tough. What's your best advice to somebody who, whether it's a skincare clinic or any business in general, just being an entrepreneur, somebody who started something, um, what's your advice to somebody who's thinking about starting their own business? Uh, My advice is to make sure you're organized and prepared, prepared for the worries and prepared for the stresses and make sure you're balancing life. So you want to stay healthy, right? So anytime anybody's going in, no matter little business, big business, I think finding that balance and being prepared for that because you can easily get in over your head. And so what does that mean? That means talking to other mentors. That means um, talking to other people in your industry, being prepared, you know, what is it going to look like for the next six months and goal setting. How have you found mentors? You've mentioned that a couple times now. It's something that I think I didn't do very well. But how have you gone about finding mentors? I I feel like I find a mentor every week. Somebody you look up to that you're like, what are they doing right? At least they look like they're doing really well. And so I grew up with a really strong mentor, my own mom who started a business and I've looked up to her and then I had a grandfather and uncle. So I have a really big family ties of entrepreneurs. But outside of that, you know, just networking as far as Um, Now I go to these conferences all over the country or world, really. I went to one in Mexico last year in October and met um, VP of Hilton and Marriott and the spa industry and just getting to know these people and hearing them speak. 
Um, and then you get you dive into their podcasts and their YouTube channels, and you get to. Um, that's kind of a fun way to, I think, find a mentor. And I don't, I don't seek mentorship. I feel like I just find it organically. We do chemical peels, acids. Oh, somebody wrote me a sweet little note today. <laughs> Thanks, Michaela. A little sweet inspirational note. So I'll leave that. But we have some fun, um, you know, I'm all about the aesthetics and organization and keeping things really clean is important too. Yeah. When you started off, what were some of the hardest challenges that you had to overcome to get to where you are now? I think, oh, the hardest challenges to overcome starting off was balance. When do I turn my work mind off? That is something that, um, it, it went over to my personal life too. At the time I was single and dating and there was really no time for that. Um, I, and I couldn't turn it off. I would be driving my kids around trying to listen to them at the same time I'm thinking about tomorrow's bookings and bills due. So I think that was probably one of the biggest challenges. You have to have a moment of going, I'm in over my head. I have to surround myself and hire the right people and work smarter. Tell me what, how you solve that. Well, it's tough because you see the profit margins. Finally, you're like, okay, so there's some success here, but what is it going to take to balance life out? So kind of making sure I hired the right people at the time. And I think that helped balance out and delegating properly because you can hire anybody and you know, they're capable of it, but it's just having that control balance yeah. of knowing that you're hiring the right person and they are capable of that and plus so much more. Yeah. And so that's one of my biggest challenges was just hiring the right people, trusting them and delegating. Mm. So uh, it's so it's such a common thread I think amongst a lot of entrepreneurs is just that that ability that that leap to hire someone and then to let go. So right. it sounds like you've done it well. When when you're looking forward, you've now have two two spots, one here in South Lake and one in in Dallas. Are you thinking of expanding more, or have you found that balance to where you're saying let's just maintain and this is good? How do you think about growth? Um, I think there's opportunity for so much growth. And so it's where do you stop it or where, when are you ready? And so I've really learned that growing organically, you know, really nurturing the staff you have and the culture you have and um, listening to their goals because I would love to open another location, but it would be me investing in somebody that's also invested in the company already. And so there's a lot of opportunity for growth. Um, so just timing out right and making sure again, you know, the right people for that. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, if this is, this is kind of the juicy question is people want to know numbers. If somebody's thinking about, I'm going to go down this road and then eventually open up a spa, a, a, a skincare spa, um, how much could someone make realistically? Like just kind of average ballpark idea of like, if somebody were to go into this, start their own clinic, go to these conferences, meet a lot of people, find the right product, be able to get that word of mouth marketing. What could somebody stand to make if they had their own clinic? If you can build the right location and the right staff and have it booked and build that reputation up, which doesn't happen overnight, Many people try to do it. Um, if you can build it up correctly and have the right leadership set up for it, you could, I mean, millions a year. And especially if you're on the injectable side and you're doing, or laser side and you're doing these higher end services, then you're ultimately set up for, I would believe millions a year. And then building reputation and building also other locations then just multiply that. Yeah, that's amazing. Such a huge opportunity then to, you know, keep growing if that's if that's the path that you wanna go. Um, I, I also wanted to dive into the, um, the product because I don't know yes. exactly what services or, I mean, you talked about injectables, you mentioned some other things that I have no idea what right. they do and and it's for men and women, is that correct? Are you, Yes. what's the split there? So I would say right now we're at a 80-20 or possibly, I don't know the numbers, 85-15 of female to men ratio. Okay. But what's happening now in the industry are men are all of a sudden, I, I think there's a shift. They're used to seeing their wives, their mothers, they're, they're all of a sudden improving and looking younger and men used mm -hmm. to look younger and now, who's looking younger. Yeah. So I think men are finally catching on that, 
you know, maybe all this stuff is working for them yeah. and now they're coming in. So the male population is definitely increasing big time cool. over the last two years, I would say. Cool. And then the products and services, maybe, maybe talk about the top things people are doing right. and what those actually are for people who don't know anything about skincare like me. Right. So <laughs> a lot of people think, um, a lot of people will actually go to local dermatologist and the dermatologist is like, here's some medications, try that out and see how it works for you. I'd say it's kind of a recipe of failure 90% of the time because there's not a lot of direction behind it. There's not a lot of detail. And I mean, frankly, they are high education and don't want to sit talking to somebody for 20 minutes about how to cleanse their face properly. So there's, we're kind of this missing link um, of people, and I respect dermatologists, so I don't want to sound like they run a great business. And there's some that actually have good skincare clinics amongst them, mm -hmm. but a lot of times it's very medical driven and it's very intimidating. So if somebody comes here, they usually want to, they have some little skin issue tiny little skin issue and they want that detail and their friend told us, told them about us. So they'll come in. Um, we typically do a consult with every single service, no matter what. And we talk about, you know, what you want to see, what's your budget like, and then we'll go into the services we offer. So whether it could be a facial, it could be a consult with a nurse practitioner that will help with these little lines and they want instant gratification. Well, there's different services for that. So it, there's just, um, you know, detailed uh, consultation helps us guide them and then we build those long-term relationships with them. Makes sense. I wish I had somebody on the table right now. Yeah. No, I'm not going on the <laughs> table. <laughs> How great would it that be? One, it would be good, yeah. but there's no way I I'm won't, doing it. I won't do anything crazy. <laughs> Just like a little cleanse. I can't even go closer in. Come on, yeah, come okay. on, Spencer. Well, we're not doing injections. We're not doing no, injections. No, oh, no, I don't do okay, that. Okay. I don't do that. Oh I'm not, I'm not, I'm yeah. not um, prepared for that. Okay. Actually, we'll go, we'll do, <laughs> let me think. We're going to go in the other room because okay. I got a hot towel. Okay, so I've talked him into <laughs> being my model for the day so you guys can see a little bit about what we do. Oh, this is comfortable. My goodness, it's like a cloud. See? It's like laying on a cloud. Yeah. As if I'm going to bed. Okay, good night. I'm going to cover your eyes so the light's not too bright, okay? And so I just kind of want to see. I love when I get somebody else on the spot like this. And so with his skin, I just kind of take a look. And so what I would do on him is a good brightening treatment. And what that means is it's a relaxing treatment, nothing crazy. He wouldn't go home looking crazy. His wife and kids wouldn't notice. His skin would just look really glowy uh, in a good way, like healthy skin. And then there would be no downtime, no peeling or anything like that. Okay, and that's a wrap. Now that was just like a mini little treatment. Wow, yes. Roxanne, I think, I think I'm gonna come here more often. Okay, great. <laughs> Credit card, please. <laughs> Thank you so much, Roxanne. You've Thank shared you. so much, and I think it's gonna be super helpful to people who are trying to start a business, whether it's in this industry or not. I think the things we learn as entrepreneurs, a lot of them transition, the fundamentals turn, transition over to any industry. So thank you so much for taking the time thank you for and for letting us play in your clinic. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. A big thanks to Roxanne for letting us spend so much time with her. If you like this video, make sure you check out this video right here where we talk with Chris Gronkowski, the founder and CEO of Ice Shaker. It's an amazing story. You don't wanna miss out on that one. Click that video now and we'll see you right there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.